All right, so I got that thing figured out and it needed all the shims. It's supposed to be 6 thousandths of an inch. So now, let me, uh, yeah, you can see it. So you got this little axle shaft that comes out of there that's splined to this dude, this hub. And this is the original piece, okay? And this little cork gasket deal went right here. And that went on uh, down there. So I got my new piece of cork. I'm gonna slide it on in case you need the part number. Uh, it's a 5G0635. Okay, anyway, um, got everything set to go. And you put this hub on. All right. We put our rubber cork gasket. This is what the original one looked like. You can tell it's uh, a little different, a little thicker, newer, whatever, better. So we put that on like that. Then we have our uh, nut that goes on. All right, so you see that there's a, a little recess deal. That's where your cork goes. Your nut goes there, but it actually will compress this down a little bit. And then the nut itself hits the outside ring and it just compresses that dude. So now we're rocking. So put that dude in there. Got your nut on. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to get my um, 9 sixteenths, um, 2 and 9 sixteenths socket and my 3 quarter inch ratchet. Got my um, 2 and 9 sixteenths socket. And you put it on there. Then you need to make sure you got the right tool for the job. <sighs> kind of make sure it's on. <sighs> there we go. All right, so this dude torques on here to, I don't know, 400 foot pounds or basically as tight as you can get it. So it has a torque spec on it and you gotta use a uh, three quarter inch torque wrench to torque it, which mine is being used by somebody else indefinitely, apparently. So, pretty much just uh, tighten her on home. And you're not going to over tighten this nut. You can under tighten it, but you're not going to be able to get it too tight. Tighten her on down, and then we can put that uh, steering clutch assembly back. There we go. Precisely 450 foot pounds. Right tool for the job every time. All right, so I got my steering club assembly ready to go. Got my new brake clutch, which I had to get from Caterpillar because I could not find the friction material and I couldn't find anybody uh, that would put it on in Fort Worth, Texas. I could have sent it to Houston and would have taken a week and there are some really great guys on the phone in Houston but hey this guy needed it now so anyway just wanted to show you guys how this setup is. Now there's two spacer rings one here and one here you can see that one flipping around that goes like that and then if you're looking down at the top this is how the setup looks. So you see what happens is when you pull this dude, when you set the part brake, it pulls this up and it pulls that up. It actually applies, or excuse me, I'm sorry. It 
match to here. When this pulls up, it actually tightens this drum around the outside. And this outside drum is actually connected to the um, um, final drive. This side's connected to the pinion. So this is where it slips at. Well, anyway, got it on. I need to put my um, throw out yo, back on. Goes like that. Goes like that. These uh, bolts have little pins in there to let that do a slide on. So we put that in. Put our little nut, or our retainer, rather. I'm actually gonna flip this dude around. Make him go like that. So you put that one in. And this one in. Then tighten it down. I'm just going to use three quarter inch impact. That one on full. Whatever you uh, lift this up, if you're using a crane, zip tie this arm uh, to this little dude. What that'll do, that'll keep your whole clutch assembly inside your brake drum, which I just dealt with for like 30 minutes trying to figure it out. But anyway, I'm going to slide it over there. Well, we're back on the 933C and we got to get these bolt holes lined up for this brake drum on here. So you got bolt holes around in here and this is your only area where you can actually fit a bolt. So if you pull the uh, machine forward and back, push it forward or pull it back, you can actually rotate it to get it access to that hole right there. So you gonna have him pulling the truck and Motioning forward. I've got the, both the, the ripper and the uh, uh, the bucket doesn't look like it's off the ground, but it is. Yeah, and there goes my uh, uh, umbrella. That's what you get for not uh, attaching it to anything. You're just. Yeah, your fruit strap. Yeah. All right, so we fixed my uh, uh, OSHA approved umbrella with the OSHA approved strap. Ta da! So what he's gonna do, he's gonna pull forward a little bit so it makes it tight. Now, I'm gonna get underneath here. So anyway, you can see what we're doing. I'm watching those holes in that hole. And uh, we're pulling it with the truck, so. I'm gonna go ahead and get off the video just because uh, you know, it kind of needs a lot of concentration, got a lot of stuff going on at one time, but you'll see the finished product. Well, the four-wheel drive's messed up on the green service truck. One of the hubs are messed up and they're brand new Warren hubs, so that's awesome. Replaced them, I think, four months ago. So, take it back to our rallies. So we got a big bad A uh, 710D 4x4 backhoe hooked up. Should make short work of this. I'm going to do a... Uh, Sit up in the cab and let Riley bolt this dude together. Ha ha! Well, next part of the video, this thing will be all, or the brake drum will be bolted together. All right, so we got all the uh, bolts and bolts in, the flanges and everything. It was kind of a big pain in the butt because um, <clears throat> you have to drag this thing you know backwards and forwards when we had the the backhoe we're using the arm that arm's working great man it was a perfect setup but um uh, the owner had told me i could use it and then when i was using it he came out and told me he said hey uh oh by the way i don't want you using that arm because that pin's missing on the bottom <laughs> so uh i gotta find a new pin for him that's pretty awesome so anyway, we got all them bolts and the flanges and everything back in and 
I lost my mechanic that was out here helping me. He uh, can't handle the heat, I guess. It's only 90 degrees. There's not a not much breeze today, and I don't think he's used to working outside in the field, so didn't drink enough water today. Well, anyway, um, I got to check all these, make sure they're all tight. Just double check those, and then after that, you put those two bolts, and there's that bolt, that flange down there has four bolt holes. So we put the four bolts back in there. Then we can put our uh, little hydraulic actuator on there and get her sealed up and start putting her back together. So I'll do that. Um, anyway, I'll get those four bolts back in the flange and put that uh, hydraulic ram back on there. And a couple more hours, we'll have this thing running. Okay, well, I got my bolts down there. I'll tighten her up. I've got this little uh, dude here. That hole goes through that hole, and there's a pin that goes through it, and a cotter pin. I'm going to put that on. I need to put my rod that goes down to that um, uh, part brake uh, lever. Put that rod on, have it come up here, and then I'll put my little extension in here. So, this dude has his pin. It goes through it like that, okay? That goes through that little stem down there. Or you put a cotter pin through that hole. So I'll go ahead and put that on and then continue on the All right, so I got my <clears throat> little tie rod here connected down there. See my little cotter key. Got my cotter pin on there. And this is supposed to be loose, just FYI. And the reason... If I can find the little parts, what did I do with it? It's because this part got that pin through it and that pin's pressed in there. So this part just sits in like this, loose. Okay, gives it a little, um, uh, makes it easy to install. So don't go try to find a pin or anything to shove through there. And then um, once we get this together, we'll actually go through the adjustment procedure, but all I got to do now is put this pin, it goes in here, and the way you do that, you stick a pry bar down in there and you pry this uh, release fork, um, or throw out bearing, uh, uh, release fork, that way, and then you put that little pin in there. So, I will do that. The other day when I took that part off, I was uh, here with my, my other mechanic. Now I don't have one, so you have to improvise. So, I've got my big pry bar stuck in between that mount down there pried against that release fork got me a ratchet strap over to the handle and over there and then when you tighten it down it doesn't need a whole lot but that's just enough to get that that little bar in there so now i'll pull my ratchet strap off and the set and then um got to put the hydraulic line on that release cylinder so everything in there is all buttoned up and ready to be tested. I've got to clean this uh, flange surface around here. I got to take this cover off and clean the flange surface on it and then put RTV on both of them. Put the covers back down and then uh, put the little release uh, mechanism on there for the uh, park brake or the apply, whatever you call this lever, um, the adjuster, and then start putting the seat and stuff back on. So that's coming together pretty quick. So just a little note, whenever you put this plate on the top, make sure this arm is uh, sticking up through this hole and you'll fight like hell with it just like I just did. So anyway, this little arm connects to that guy by using this uh, pin and a cotter key or a cotter pin rather. So anyway, I'm going to put the silicone around here, put that on, silicone this dude, and then uh, put that plate on. Alright, so continuing to tear down this little uh, hydraulic steering valve, you take this nut or a bolt out that's a 9 16 Then uh, this pin should just slide right out. Pretty easy. So you got your pin there. Make sure you keep your parts. It's always fun having to go to the store and get more parts. 
So this is your uh, little arm, and you can tell on there as it rides. So what happens, when you hit that pedal, this dude cams over like this. Let's see. Like that. It pushes on this roller down here. Yeah, I'm trying not to get cast a shadow, but it's really bright today and super humid. So anyway, um, you got this little roller, and you can see that flat spot in it right there that's what happens on these so if you have to push the pedal down you know twice as hard as you used to um look for this roller i guarantee this roller is messed up so anyway pull your um uh, we're gonna rebuild this whole cylinder so you pull this bolt this bolt this bolt and this bolt out you got that one loose that one's loose Not gonna happen. Well, I'll do that off camera. All right, so we got our uh, four bolts out. We need to take this uh, rear bolt off here. And then an actual valve comes off this bracket. Arr. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta growl at it. So this assembly comes off. We've got one of our uh, bolts there. And pulling this out, it's a pretty simple setup. Oh no, we lost our spring. It's good to get a bunch of dirt on all your uh, hydraulic parts, you know, because the dirt gets in there and it, uh, it wears into all the stuff for you. And yes, that's a joke. So you got an o ring here, there's a little piston in there. And then on this side, you've got that uh, uh, roller assembly that comes out. It just pulls straight out like that. There's our roller. Let me grab some paper towels here. I want to get my work truck dirty. So to get that roller out, you just press that little pin out. There you go, now you can see it. And I replace it, so I'm probably just gonna set my phone up and then film this and kind of speed it up. Well, I ran into a little problem. That is the part that uh, I got from Caterpillar, which is not the right part. Uh, I did hammer that little roller out to figure out that it was the wrong part. And um, I just kind of had to put that little roller back in, which happens sometimes. Um, I'll just have to come out at a later date and replace that roller and do the other side. Um, this guy needs this dozer going now. So I'm just going to put this back together and then put it on the sh All right, so I've got my cover on I've got these lines ow got these two lines on so that one goes over to this steering cylinder that one goes over to this steering cylinder you got your hydraulic pressure hookup and your hydraulic pressure hookup I've got my spring connected it connects back here a little cotter pin that goes through here I've got my adjuster connected and I've got my linkage up there right there connected so now I've got everything I need ready to go. But before I put the seat back in, I want to start this and try to move it forward and back and just make sure that nothing crazy is going on. But before I even do that, I'm going to replace these ends because somebody has done an atrocious job of these ends. So if you get these battery terminal ends and you have these little bolt down clamps like this these don't work very well at all I and mean, these are kind of like an emergency roadside repair deal i solder all mine in some guys crimp them unless you have a hydraulic crimper don't crimp them um, the little hammer down deals i don't like because if you look at that little hammer uh deal you, you know your end of your battery terminal looks like this i'll be crimping down and it only has one little sharp spot that it crimps down on like right there so if you look where your crimp is, you'll just have these two little bitty marks, and that's it. So you're not getting real good connection. I like soldering these because I got a 100% connection between the two, and then a heat shrink around it. Keep all the uh, moisture and stuff out. So this really thick cable, the easiest way to cut is with a die grinder. So I'm going to take my die grinder out, cut that one off, cut that one off. We're going to strip back about an inch of the insulation, and, I'll, and then I'll set my camera up, and I'll show you how I make ends. 